part right of making this is prescription for your transformation real people real conversations and real success bringing to you part three of the heart of resilience the story behind two artists benjamin azreen traveling through the congo bringing forth the symbolism of humanity how it is that we can all collaborate together in a, in creating a space where we can have our voices heard where we can be witnessed and where we're able to help each other step into that best version of ourselves so that we can deliver the best service to the rest of the world. But even more importantly, the work that they're doing will transcend time. It will help others see what's possible in this world of collaboration, of inspiration, of creativity, and, and, and understanding that our past has brought us to where we are today. It's not something that we can deny or cancel, but what we can do is, is, is pick up what we can to work out and what's better for all of us. And so for today, we're talking, we're going back to Kisangani in the Congo and in bringing together the symbolism of what it represents, what the, the city of Kisangani represents and also the innocence and the authenticity of the children in an orphanage, which can remind us that what's more important in our relationship with others and humanity is to be true to ourselves, to be authentic, because it's that authenticity that will radiate outside of us so that people can recognize, you know what, I can trust this person. And this is that very experience that both Benjamin and Azarine as well. Benjamin Ezrin, thank you so much for today. I'm excited to be sharing this mural, these two murals from Kisangani, and reminding us that it's important for us to really understand, you know, um, our relationship with the rest of the world. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you also. So take us on your journey again. Yeah, like uh, a journey happens every time you open up this dialogue because uh, you're so well spoken and I totally we're on board with this message and so happy that there are many people in the world that reflect this symbiotic nature. And one example in Kisangani is that in the previous week you saw a mural on a clinic and you heard the story. There's another element to it that a local artist came to help and started painting for, you know, half a day, but then said, $10, I need $10. And we said, well, if we paint this together, the amount of jobs that are going to emerge after we finish are gonna be endless. Uh, are you sure you want you want to focus so much on just give me ten dollars? And then he stole paintbrushes from us, and that was disheartening because we really s ventured there to be able to learn from the artist as much as teach and to share in the creative process. And what is so incredible about this mural today, this first one, both of them actually is that we were joined by such an authentic Rasta Congolese painter that came out every single day and painted beside us, shared ideas. We came up with the compositions together and he was the authenticity and the inspiration and that friendship that we were really looking forward to and excited to have. And so, I brought up that first scenario because not everything was totally perfect and happy go lucky, everything going divinely, um, you know, perfect. Well, you know what I mean, you know. Right. So anyways, the, the point is that we jump back on that dream and then the next person that showed up was exactly who needed to show up. And we got to share incredible experiences and now have a lifelong friendship emerging from that. So with the team of three of us, 
and the support of Alliance France, like the French Consulate of Culture, the mayor's office, and the local Rotary, we were gifted, we were given the opportunity to paint on the wall in the very center park of Kisangani in front of the mayor's office. And it really, it really was a journey. It was actually right at Christmas time, 2020. Yeah, and you had just gotten over malaria. Or you had just started getting malaria, actually. <laughs> I had malaria throughout <laughs> the painting of this mural, yes. Yeah, it was, uh, it was really interesting because we actually got to go to the village where if you look at the mural, you see the gentleman in the basket and in the water. We actually got to go see them do this acrobatic slash fishing feat that was really cool. I mean, they climb up on these like this huge almost scaffolding, but it's about double the, the size of regular scaffolding. And they have these baskets hanging off of it that are catching the fish going through the rapids. And it's getting and and these baskets are huge. And these guys are just, you know, swimming in the rapids, like it's it's uh, it's their everyday thing. And I'm like, oh my like it was yeah it's it's incredible. Like, I want to get into I want to get in there yeah yeah yeah. it is their everyday thing and they sing along the way yeah and so I knew that I didn't want to be an observer just taking photographs so we went back and I had to jump in the water with them and had to not accept no for an answer because they worried about my my life and <laughs> my my well-being, and but your fever. <laughs> yeah, well, that and the malaria. But it, no, I just needed to get in with them, you know, and share a moment with them. And and the okapi, this animal that you may or may not have seen before, that's related to the giraffe, that has this uh, this zebra booty, <laughs> and uh, and like a gazelle head. Uh, it, it's like a unicorn mystical creature of the Congo, but it really exists. It's just very rare, very, very rare. rare. And this is a very important symbol for the people that are proud to be Congolese. And then the divine feminine of this beautiful face that's emerging out of the neck of the Okapi. And the importance, the courage, the brilliance, the glow of this woman representing all women was so important to share because we have the courageous, strong men that are fishing and working hard to provide for their family. And you have the very strong women that endure so much and are resilient beyond belief and keep the family and the household together. And together is that unit. And, uh, and so it was, it was beautiful to be exposed to very powerful and loving units of that nature in Kisangani. Then the flora and fauna in Papa Africa painted his version of the beautiful lit sunset silhouetted village and elder rowing in the traditional canoe along the golden Congo River. This was a very, very important piece in the center of Kisangani mm -hmm. for many reasons. One, based on something that you mentioned at the beginning, was that a lot of people in the community actually initially suspected that we were artists in cover, but really our main purpose there was to steal diamonds and gold and cobalt. And so to paint with local artists and to paint the symbols and celebrating this culture and with the skill that's been developed over the years, obviously of a lot of hard work, then we were able to shift that perception and start uh, living together with the people more. Mm -hmm. And I, I found with having Papa Africa there to uh, a lot of the Congo, there's a, actually to the right of this mural, there is like a playground almost. And there's a lot of kids there. And with Papa Africa there, everybody started asking, like, you know, do you guys do classes? Is there, is there art classes here? 
So it opens and it broadens that kind of creative space for other people who are like, yeah, like art is a thing that we can do here. Art is a thing that we can teach here. And everybody gets excited about that. It's really cool. And Papa Africa became a celebrity, mm -hmm, yeah. you know, overnight. And he already just has such a, a wonderful personality and such patience for the people. Mm -hmm. Dove deeper into his backstory. And it turned out that for many years, over a decade, he was a professional soccer player in Tanzania and Kenya when he had left Kisangani during the time of the war. And then he turned to art and his love, this really, uh, rough and tough, loving, awesome, inspiring, glowing Congolese woman was painting as well and just learning, but had the motivation to go far and to be able to stand strong with her awesome, you know, gentleman that she stands beside and he stands beside her. It was really, really awesome. Mm -hmm. And there were other elements there that just wow like he his dream is to create an art school and the notoriety that came from his participation his love and his genius mm -hmm. using these colors uh has opened the door for him to be that much closer to creating a school of empowerment through the colors of love mm -hmm. right there in kisangani it was it was big time you know, it was really successful. Yeah, yeah, and what a what an awesome uh, part of the community to be working with Papa Africa. You know how, how beautiful this is, and and that that you know you're having this impact on others, and you know no one would necessarily think right away, you know, how artists would impact others, but throughout time, art has really impact culture, and so you're giving this huge gift to others uh, from your hearts you know, to lighten up their world. And, um, and especially now, you know, with the next mural, you know, with the orphanage. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, we're really bringing it to the next generation of uh, children that don't have families are inside this orphanage and have created a family amongst the, the, the children. Um, so we wanted to bring them something really fun and and uh, for this hallway that it was initially very kind of closed off, we wanted to really brighten it up and bring something that the kids can play around. And even when we finished, the kids were starting to draw the animals that we had uh, painted. So we brought them the, the monkey doing some photography to inspire the kids to get into that really kind of artistic space and, and the, the elephant painting those beautiful colors of love, of course. And um, the kids there, they, I mean, as soon as we walked in just for the tour, they were playing football. And uh, I mean, they're really good. <laughs> ben got in there, I was like, I'll watch. But uh, we have the the lion uh, playing football. And also the, if you see the, the ball is pink to represent also women can play football and really enjoy it. The lioness. The lioness. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ready to ravage with love, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and then we have a crocodile flying a, a spaceship. And Azarine's an incredible astronaut giraffe playing the <laughs> piano. Rocket man. A pink dancing zebra that actually is very similar to Azarine's first you know stuffed animals when she was young so we got to really tap into our inner child in this journey of mm -hmm. painting with yeah. the kids as well and then a, a lion playing the violin and it just was really really exciting to be in the presence of 98 orphans mm -hmm. that weren't asking us for money or trying to get something from us they were thirsty for connection yeah real connection real connection we got to share art class with them we did this really fun exercise where their covid masks and bandanas and stuff would cover their eyes and we'd play some music or count to 20 and they would scribble with their eyes closed and then open their eyes and where can their imagination take them 
Love it. Yeah, it was really, really special. And Papa Africa was there with us all the way. And we had additional volunteers from the ro local Rotaract uh, group of young adults. So it, it just was an all-inclusive, incredible journey and quite the juxtaposition from painting more realistic mm -hmm. figures of the past murals. And this one really fusing the, the journey of the imagination with photorealism, with some surrealism, and why don't we just all be creative and have fun with some footballs in the clouds? <laughs> Love it. And, and again, you know, it's, it's relatable to the kids. I mean, this is clearly a different uh, type of art, if you will. And it's a lot of fun. I mean, I, I have big smiles just looking at it. Yeah, Amanda really, I mean, we, we really connected with these, these youth and we definitely want to go back. And we were able, thankfully, to have uh, a lot of supplies that we were able to leave mm -hmm. with Papa Africa so he can continue doing art class and with these incredible youth, these children for years to come. And uh, so we would like to go back and visit because uh, if Amanda had her way, we would be sitting right now with 98 yeah. amazing kids surrounding us on the couch, you know, uh, but they're always in our hearts and they really in inspired our journey big time. Well, you've dramatically changed their lives for the future and uh, hopefully, you know, future leaders of their own country inspired by your creativity to look at world in a different way. And as we look to the future, we can begin to look at our world in different ways, how we can actually work together, not against each other, not, not finding fault in each other, but respecting each other's creativity, or each other's uniqueness, and learning from the past, not ignoring it, but learning from the past and moving on to the future. I want to thank you both for today <coughs> and give you the, the last word. Thank you. Mm -hmm, thank you. An inspiration for all of us that sometimes it can be really simple what we can do to change the world. And just even with that, thank you. I thank you. And we'll be back with part four with Benjamin and Nazarene. Also, privately known as Amanda, and um, some more gems of their creativity and their impact in the Congo. I'm Dr. Bart Rademacher. This is Prescription for Your Transformation. Real people, real conversations, and real success. And we'll be back. Thank you. Thanks for joining us on another episode of Dr. Rademacher's Prescription for Your Transformation. Continue the path towards discovering your own authentic genius by tuning in next time for more real conversations with real people.